This is Diana Sullivan. You can machine it gifts for kids who love Build-A-Bears and Teddies this holiday. My new book has a dress, a Mary Jane slipper, sweaters, a tam, a poncho, and a bonus pants pattern. Today I'll show you how to do the poncho, which has very interesting techniques. I'm teaching this basic poncho that you can make for an 18-inch Build-A-Bear. I have made a whole pile of ponchos because this is a fun way to use oddments of yarn. So for instance, here I had two colors of yarn and I did a Fair Isle version. The advantage of the Fair Isle version was it gave me double fringe because those are the ends of that yarn. This is sideways knitted. So it was knitted in this direction and it gave me double fringe. Now there's a method for locking the fringe that I will show you on this basic one. But there it is in Fair Isle and here's another Fair Isle one. Again this gave me double fringe because I had both the black and the bright self-striping yarn. And then here it is in just a self-striping yarn that uh, was one of my prototypes. I think I came out a little too small and I came up with a better way to do the neckline. So there's a few of them and we're going to do a simple one. You can use anything that you like that you have a group for yarn and you have enough of it. So I have this yarn that I'm going to use. It's kind of a slubby, bumpy, pretty thing and it'll make a nice little poncho. This is a quick, easy project. I will start by casting on with waist yarn over 56 needles. So that is needle number 28 on the right over to needle number 28 on the left. And what I'm going to do is use a contrasting waist yarn on tension 4. I'm just hand feeding this from the floor. I do hand feed a lot. So, one row on every other needle. Putting a clothespin on my loose end. Putting a comb on, which holds all these loops down. Bringing out my in-between needles. Plus, I need one extra on the left so that I have the full 56 needles. 28 to 28. And I knit a few rows. I really don't need much. I'll cut this yarn. Use another clothespin because I love these short cuts. And I'm going to thread some ravel cord. This is a pink ravel cord. The main thing here is to have a good strong contrast to the regular poncho yarn. So my ravel cord is in and now I'm going to do a quick hem. My hem for the ponchos is a four row hem plus an extra row for turning. So what I've been doing is two rows on my regular tension with my poncho yarn. Oh, and before I go any farther with the project, I have to put out my extra needles to make the self-fringing yarn. So I leave seven empty needles and bring out, so seven in position A and bring out an eighth. And I'll hook that yarn on it. This is row one. I'll put my row counter on. Row one. Then on the left, do the same thing. These seven empty needles give me my self-fringing effect. Really easy, really cute. So what I'm going to do is knit to the left. This is my second row on tension four. Then roll it all the way up to tension eight. And yes, even the hem has fringe. That's my loose row. Back down to tension four and do two rows. And 
I need to start locking my fringe. If you don't lock the last needle before the long fringy loops, then you get a problem. What you get is it comes undone. Now I'm just picking up the stitch from the row below on the needle just to the last of the right hand needle and putting that on and that's how you lock them. Now normally I am only going to do this on the carriage side but for this first one I did it on the right so that I could show you easily on camera. So I have done it on both sides and I have one, two, three, four, and um, one more tight row. And time to pick up my hem. To pick up my hem, I'm taking the comb off. Here I am, zoomed in on the left end of the work, and I am finding the stitches to pick up. This pink row right here is my ravel cord. And here's the end of the yarn, and I'm going to pick up this, these stitches that are in between the pink loops. They are this blue-green stuff in between the pink loops. So I pick those up, and I put them on the needle directly above them, filling in all the needles. When I get to the right-hand end of the work, I'm going to be short a needle. So, I'm going to do this off camera, and in a moment when I come back, I'll have them all picked up. My hem is picked up, and my next row is going to close my hem. For this particular pattern, I really like to have a weight on each end, and then a couple weights in the middle, or one of these bigger ones. Either one will work just fine. And I'm just lining these up so they'll knit more easily. I am going to put my row counter on 0, 0, 0, and I'm going to knit 30 rows, but I'm going to lock the fringe on the carriage side on every row. So here I am, locking that fringe. I'm picking up the stitch from the row below, beside it, and putting it on the end stitch. Not this outrigger stitch, but this end stitch over here. If you don't lock your fringe, you end up with really ugly messes on the edges of your work. It will all unravel. Now, right now, I have a routine. It's really easy, and I am simply going to knit until I have 30 rows done, and then I will show you the next step. So, back in a few rows. I just knitted my 30th row, and before I go on, so that I don't forget, I'm locking this fringe on the right. Now, this is not the only way to lock the fringe. There's a couple other ways. You can do a lace transfer over, or one of my favorite ways is to have a separate ball of yarn hanging over here, and each row you would wrap this over this end hook before you knit, and that will lock it very nicely. In fact, that's my preferred method if you do your little poncho in a feral pattern. Now what we need to do at this point is put in the neck opening. The neck opening is 30 stitches wide and I'm going to go ahead and choose a very strongly contrasting waist yarn. I really want to be able to see the difference between this yarn and the waist yarn. So I've got a piece of bright white, and I am bringing out needles from 15 on the right to 15 on the left. And oops, I picked out one too many, so let's take care of that. Now I am opening all of the latches, 
and then I'm holding my white yarn and putting it in all of those open needles. It is down inside the hooks. And then I'm moving the needles back. Back, back, back. And what happens is when I bump up against the gate pegs, the old stitches are holding the latches shut. And I'm going to hand knit that back by pulling on the butt of the needle. And I can do it quickly because what happens is slack yarn travels through the tube created by those latches and I can just quickly zip across and get everybody knitted with this white yarn. This makes the easiest neck opening super easy to finish. It's really kind of like a giant buttonhole. There's my neck opening, and I'm kind of pushing the fabric down and making sure it's good. Now, this one seems to have split the blue yarn a little, and I just don't want the blue yarn in there. So, yeah, I'm picking at it and making sure it's out. Okay, so that is my neck opening after the 30 rows, and I need to do 30 more rows before I can do the ending hem. So... I go back to my routine. My row counter still says 30. I've already locked my fringe on the carriage side. So I knit a row. Oh, and look. This needle was back out of work. So I'm going to manually knit that through. It'll be okay. But I want them all to have knitted through okay. They look okay to me. So. I go ahead and I do my fringe lock on the left and that was row 16 and I go ahead and knit to row 60. I've knitted 60 rows. I want to do a hem and what I need is a marker. So for my marker, so that I pick the hem up in a couple of minutes, I am going to put in a weaving row. So here I am with my piece of white yarn. I am pulled my needles out into hold position and I'm just going to use a close pin on the end of this yarn to hold it down and back against the knitting and poked it back there and I am wrapping over under over under. This is just the easiest marker row. I'm not going to knit with this white. I'm just weaving it over and under the needles and I'll yank it out after I pick up my hem. Now I'm going to knit the first two rows of the hem and since I didn't lock that first side, I'm going to do both sides on this first row. I could have locked before I put the weaving yarn in, but anyway, let's get this thing locked. I'm just picking up the blue stuff, not the white yarn, and putting it on the end needles on both ends. Try sometime doing a self-fringing item without locking the fringe, and you'll see why it's important to lock it. And locking and turning up my tension for a fold row. A fold row. 
back to tension four, locking on the left, and another hem row, locking, and my last hem row. Now I need to pick up my hem, and the easiest thing to do is to bring this knitting between these beds into the front. I have just lazily left my ribber on. I am at this point finished making fringe, so I'm dropping the fringe off the end needles and I'll just let that hang. It will be unraveled and trimmed later. So there's that, and then I have to pick these up. I want to pick up each of the loops that the marker goes through. So it goes under them. See them? So it goes under this one. Get it with my tool. And put it on the second one. And then here's the next one. I have to kind of pick around and get it. But I got it. And put it there. And then this one is the next one. And then this one right here. It's the next one. Oops, I got a little bit of white and when you split your waist yarn it makes it harder to get out later. So I took care of that. Anyway, I'm going to go on across in this fashion and pick my hem up. And then I'll be back on camera in a minute to show you the quick bind off. I've hung my hem now I'm going to pull out my white yarn. I took the clothespins off and I pull and out it goes. It made a great little temporary marker row. I'm going to knit a very loose row. So I'm rolling my machine all the way up to tension 10. I've already dropped those outside fringe needles. So I'm just going to close the hem and bind off. So over I go, and I just keep pulling down yarn from above so that it's loose. Otherwise it is not loose enough to suit me. And this is better with the weight. So put a weight on it. I'm simply going to bind off. So I've cut the yarn. All of the needles go into hold position. And I'm doing a simple latch tool bind off. I'll zoom in so you can see it, but this is the one I do so frequently. I'm just putting the first loop on my latch tool and pulling it off the end of the needle. Then slide in far enough so that the first loop is way back here below the latch and the new loop is hooked. And pull the new loop through the old loop. Now hook the third one and pull it through, and hook the fourth one and pull it through. You get a feel for this. You know just how far to push your tool to get it past the latch. And my yarn is fuzzy and slubby, so it's a little bit different to work with, but I like it. I will latch this all the way off and when I get to the right hand side I'm going to go ahead and pull the loose end through. So here's the weird object I've knitted and the first thing I'm going to do here is get this waist yarn off the opening hem. I did that at the beginning. The next thing I'm going to do is look at the fringe to get this fringe dealt with, you just unravel it, and I even have used the point of scissors to do it. You just unravel it, and after you have quite a few, pull this down and snip. And you do that with all of the fringe, and you can check it over and give it a bit of a haircut. Then, before I finish this neck opening with you, I'm going to give this a thorough steam. So I'll be back after that. 
I've gone ahead and steamed. I did a little bit of fringe trimming, but not much, and it looks great. Steaming just does a world of good to this little project, but I still have to finish the neck opening. So I have folded it wrong sides out, and I'm going to pick up these blue stitches just above this row of white waist yarn. Now this is really simple. I put my tool in this first stitch to the left of this white loop, but it's above. It's not the loop down here. It's the loop above the white. And put it on. And then I get these loops that are in betweeners, in between the white. And I'll put them on. And I'm picking up right on across in that fashion. It was, as you'll recall, it was only 30 stitches and I think you pick up 31 by getting the loop to the outside of each of them. But maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's 32. Anyway, this is really easy. So I give this a pull down and I see the white in between all those blue stitches. So I like the looks of that. And I'm ready to do the bind off. It is so, so simple. I'm still on the very loosest tension. And I'm just going to knit across, same yarn, loose tension. And I am going to work opposite the carriage. So right here, my carriage is on my left. And I'm going to latch off from the left to the right. All the needles go and hold position. I get my latch tool. And I think maybe a weight would be nice. And I think it might be helpful to put it in from the back to kind of help hold it back against the bed. Okay, so I'm latching these guys off. This is actually a little different than some other things I've taught. So something new for you, I hope. I think some of you have seen most of the things I do twice. Let's get that. It kind of caught. Split the yarn a little. Okay. That one too. There we go. When I get to the right hand end, that's where there's a loose end of my yarn, and I'm going to pull that loose end through the last one. I'm trying to get this one. Got it. And I'm pulling my last loop through the latch tool. So that was half of my neck finishing. I'm pushing these out of work and I'm rolling the carriage over to the right because this other half I'm going to hang on and then I'm going to take this in, which I didn't cut because I'm so lazy I don't want to have an extra end to hide, and I'm going to knit from right to left. So my carriage is on the right ready for me to go. And here I go again, picking up these loops above the white thread. I 
to poke my finger in there from underneath and stretch them open a bit. It makes it easier to see it. Makes it easier to put my tool just where I want my tool to be and get these picked onto the needles. One stitch on each needle. At the end I stretch, I make sure I get that last one. Plus, I like to get an extra. Do I need an extra this time? I guess not. Okay, so another row, super loose. In fact, I pause every few stitches and pull more yarn out just to keep it loose. This time, I cut the yarn on the left because I'm going to pull that through when I cast off. And everybody out and hold. Once again, let's have a little help from a weight coming from behind. And I've got my latch tool and away I go. This really is all the finishing that this neckline needs. A simple loop through a loop cast on above and below the separator yarn. I can cast off in either direction but as a lefty I like casting off from right to left. It just seems to work a little better because of the way I hold my hands and control the knit fabric. So almost there. Last stitch. And pull that final thread through my tool. I always enjoy yanking out the separator yarn and getting a glimpse of my neat as a pin neck opening. So, time to yank. Of course, I'll take a few minutes and hide these two ends. They're the only ends I have to hide on the whole project. Lay this out, pop it open. And there it is, all done, all ready to put on my bear. So let's try this one on the bear. There it is, all finished, looking great. Two little high ends to hide on the back. Here's Teddy and his new poncho. These are quick and easy, wonderful way to use a little bit of yarn. I hope you really enjoy the pattern.